question about homosexuality in the film. Okay. Uh, sure. Two men are in love, but they are not engaging in sexual activity, so there wouldn't be any conversion of like sodomy, but mm -hmm. they would have like an emotional connection to one another. How would you view that? Would you view that as like the biblical? Sounds like they're just really good friends. Okay. You know? What if they were? <laughs> if they were what? If they say I love you? Uh -huh. I don't think it really exists. I mean, it sounds like they're just, it sounds like if there's just nothing sexual about it, it sounds like they're just really good friends. Now, if, if they're lusting after each other in their mind, well, the Bible says that that's a sin because the Bible says that even lusting after a woman that you're not married to is a sin. Because the Bible says, whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. So if you're thinking all these sick, perverted thoughts toward your male friend, well, you're already, there's already something wrong with you right there. Uh, I think we have a new questioner in the back here. Um, I'm just reading from your essay about um, homosexuality. Uh -huh. And you say it's a totally unnatural behavior. Can you elaborate yes. on what you mean by unnatural? Sure. And, and actually, I, I think that a better word, than, and I know I use the word unnatural, but I think a better word is the word that the Bible uses, which is against nature. Okay. And basically, all of us are born with a certain uh, nature, okay, a sinful nature. For example, my, my children, I don't have to teach them how to lie. I have to teach them to tell the truth, okay, because they're born with a nature that basically when they get in trouble, they're going to lie to cover it up. For example, it's, it's, it's part of our nature as men to lust after another woman, okay, that we're not married to. Well, that's a sin, according to the Bible. It's part of our nature to be tempted to steal things that we want that don't belong to us. So we are born sinners. That's why we sin all the time. You know, we have to make an effort to do what's right, okay? That doesn't come easily to do what's right. Now, homosexuality is not part of that sinful nature, okay? Because, for example, I'm tempted to do all manner of sin. And, for example, I'm driving down the road, I see a billboard, there's a girl in a bikini. The temptation is going to be for me to look at that and lust after that. It would be a sin for me to do so. I have to tell myself, hey, the Bible says no. You know, don't look at that. You know, keep my eyes on the road, not look at that uh, wicked image. Okay. But if I'm driving down the road and there's some guy in his underwear on the billboard, it's not like, oh, man, i got to make sure I don't look at this. It's just like you don't care. There's no desire there. It's not a natural, normal thing. And the Bible says there hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man, okay? So the Bible says that, you know, what you're tempted with, and he's talking to Christians in Corinth, and he says to these Christians, he says, there's no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. He's saying, hey, you're not the only one that has these temptations. It's common to man. But being tempted with another man is not common to man. Being tempted with animals or children, no, that's not common to man. That is not a natural sinful desire that you're born with. That is something that's totally against nature because the, the natural man, the normal man, okay, and when I say normal, I mean the one that has not been turned over to a reprobate mind, according to the Bible in Romans chapter 1, the natural normal man uh, does not have these desires toward the same gender, okay? And when a man, if, if a man were to walk up to him and touch him inappropriately, you know, he's going to be repulsed by that. He's going to be grossed out by it. If he's exposed to homosexuality, it's going to gross him out. Now, the media, Hollywood and TV, is working to desensitize you to that and get you used to it, to where you're comfortable with it, but naturally, you're not comfortable with it. And so that's what I mean by the fact that it's not natural, it's against nature. And it's only a person who reaches a point, and in Romans chapter 1, the Bible talks about a person who, you know, rejects the truth, rejects the Lord Jesus Christ, and gets to a point where God basically gives them up. And he uses that term three times. It says he gives them up, he gives them over, he gives them up. And he basically gives them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And not convenient means they don't come naturally. Okay. And uh, if you think about animals, they do homosexuality. Animals will do a lot of really dirty, unsanitary things that humans will not do. They'll throw up and then they'll lick up their own vomit. They'll, 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 they'll lick their own private parts. They'll, they'll, they'll eat excrement and stuff like that, okay? Well, a human being is grossed out by that kind of stuff. But see, when God gives them up and gives them over, the Bible says, you know, they basically become like an animal where they don't have the normal restraint of a human being that's made in the image of God, and it just causes them to 
go after all kinds of other animalistic, strange flesh and, and stuff like that. So. so after that point, God no longer loves them as a person? The Bible, the, I could give you 19 scriptures right now that talks about God hating people. And, that, and, ta and I could give you a whole list of verses where it says, he says, I don't love these people anymore, and in fact, I hate them. So th this myth that God loves everybody is just that. It's a myth. Now, God did love everybody at one point. You know, like there's a song that people hear in Sunday school, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they're precious in his sight. You know, you probably heard that song in church. Hey, that's a legit song. And the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So God so loved the world. You know, God loved everybody. But does God love everyone right now? No, because there comes a time where people can cross that line. Now, you know, first of all, I got, you know, 19 scriptures that say that. But not only that, even just, just basic logic should tell you that if God created hell, and I don't know if you know what hell is like, but the Bible, uh, for example, in Revelation 20.10 describes hell. It says, but, and the devil that deceived them was cast into a lake of the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So if hell is a place of fire and brimstone where people are tormented day and night forever and ever and they have no rest day or night, is that loving to send someone to a place where they burn forever and have no rest day or night? Can you say God loves those people? I mean, that, that, that is not compatible with the definition of what the Bible teaches that love is. And so, you know, God loves everybody and wants to be saved until they get to the point where it's too late and he rejects them. And, you know, God, the Bible says God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God would prefer for every person to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. He would prefer for every person. But that doesn't mean that it's not going to come to a point where it's too late for that. Now, every, anybody who even remotely calls themselves a Bible-believing Christian agrees that once people die and go to hell, it's too late for them. Well, I'm just saying that the Bible teaches in many places that it can become too late for a person before that point, sometimes, if they reject Christ enough. And I would say that homosexuals fall into that category. Okay, is it, would you say then that it is our, like, my, I, there's two parts of this, so they'll answer right after the first question, but is it our place to hate those people as well? Um, Jesus said, um, when he was asked, what is the greatest command, it was kind of a trap on the Pharisees. Uh -huh. He answered, we'll love the Lord your God. The second right. like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are we... Are we supposed to hate these people, um, or, are, or are we supposed to follow what Jesus said there and love them as ourselves? Well, but, where, but see, that verse doesn't say love every single person on this planet as yourself. Okay, it says love thy neighbor as thyself. Yes, and, he, and he answers, and then so he doesn't so, ask what who's your neighbor. Yeah. And he tells the story of the Good Samaritan. Right. And he said, Go thou and do likewise, yeah. Who was his neighbor? The guy who helped him. Neighbor, yeah. Um, Right. And, they, and yeah, you're right. And that was wrong for them to hate the Samaritans because they were hating them just because of their race. Okay. But here's the thing, though. Is Jeffrey Dahmer my neighbor? Is Adolf Hitler my neighbor? No. Okay. Then I don't have to love him, do I? Okay. So there you go. Because, I mean, think about it. If I put a sticker on the back of my car that says, I love Hitler, do you think that that would be cool? I, but but you, if you say, I love everybody, well, then that would include Hitler. You know, I don't love Hitler. I don't love Jeffrey Dahmer. I don't love child molesters. I don't love child rapists. And here's what, you, you, let me point out some hypocrisy. Because there's nobody in the world who doesn't hate anyone. And people say, I just love everybody. Okay, I talked to this guy one time, this reporter, and he's from Germany, and he said, I don't hate anybody. I said, what about Adolf Hitler? He said, well, that's the only person. See what I mean? So, you know, and, and here's the deal. Remember when Osama bin Laden was killed? Wasn't everybody rejoicing? A lot of people were. I mean, I'd say 90-some percent of people were, yeah, yeah, you know, and even publicly. But so, I mean, they hated him, you know. Can you hate actions and not people? You can, but I don't, you know, that's not what I do. <laughs> I'm sure, I guess you could, but that's not a biblical concept, you know. But I see what you're saying. I mean, that's what I was taught my whole life. You know, hate the sin, love the sinner. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that he hates the person. Okay, God hates the person. Yeah, but then, but then there's a verse in 2 Chronicles 19.2 that says that it's a sin for me to, to love certain people. Because it says, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? 
Therefore, wrath is upon thee from the Lord thy God. So God's wrath was on Jehoshaphat for helping the ungodly and loving them that hate the Lord. And David, in the book of Psalms, speaking by the Holy Ghost, said, Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? I hate them with a perfect hatred. So, but anyway, we, got to, we need to change gears right now.